If you remember where we last left off our conversation four months ago was I had some good news and I was asking people not to defecate on my dreams as you do and that good news kind of paralyzed me a little bit when I was trying to make more videos and I did shoot some more things but then I just didn't have a lot of time to put it into one comprehensible video. After that I found out that I can go to Japan and that I can live in Japan for two months and I can work and I can experience Japanese culture and I can do all the fun stuff that comes with being in Japan and then that in itself I was just like, oh god. After that, I was like, okay, I cannot fail these exams at all. That is just not an option for me because I knew that if I failed any of the exams, I would have to come back. Then I was like, this can't happen. I can't let this ruin my once in a lifetime experience. So, I was in Japan. I was climbing Mount Fuji with some friends and with some people that I met along the way. We were climbing the mountain overnight so we can watch the sunrise in the morning. So that meant climbing from the afternoon of the day before and then climbing throughout the night and then reaching the top by sunrise, watching the sunrise and then climbing down the next day. As we're climbing during the night, everything was beautiful. It was clear, like up because we were above the clouds. We could just look down and we see the clouds and we see between the patches of clouds, we're seeing small towns, all these things that like, it's just such a different perspective. Like I'm used to being down there looking up into the sky between the clouds and now I'm looking from the other direction. And I was looking at just the, the stars. <laughs> I was looking down and I was seeing the, the glittering of everyone's headlamps as they were walking up the mountain. And I was just thinking of this one line I read in a book years and years ago when I was maybe 12 or 14 years old of how both the sky and when you look into someone's eyes, both of these things have the quality of depth and also being shallow at the same time. You don't really think about it and you don't really know how to describe what it's like to look into the sky because it's not just one color. Like there is a depth to it and it's really difficult to describe exactly how it feels. And when you're looking out straight directly out into the sky, because on one side there's mountain, yeah cool, but on the other side you're on Mount Fuji, you're on the tallest mountain in Japan, all you see is sky. But as I was there and I was thinking of this line, I was like, yeah, I mean, that's pretty accurate, <laughs> which is something that I've always thought when I look up into the sky ever since I read that book that I wasn't able to remember what the book was or the author and any of that but I just you know I remember that one thing like that's so true and when I look into someone's eyes I'm like yeah like I see a depth and I see a shallowness that I otherwise couldn't describe and I don't really know how I would describe it to someone who couldn't really see it so we climb the mountain we come down oh we watch the sunrise we climb mountain watch sunrise come down and then within the next few days I end up in a secondhand bookstore because I am myself and I'm just browsing through the books and you know secondhand bookstores you don't go there to find something specific. You go there just to look to see if there maybe is something that just happened to be on your list and just happened to be in the bookstore that you just could happen to buy. And then I found it. I found the book that I was thinking of a few days ago just sitting there looking at me and I'm like, oh, <laughs> hi, it's you. I, I, it was just like a moment of, oh my god, I can't believe I found this. So I look at it, and I'm like, I didn't even take it off the shelf. I was like, oh, cool, it's you, awesome. So I was like, well, you know, I've read it before. Like, I don't really need to read it again. Like, I'm pretty picky when it comes to rereading books, even though I do it a lot. So like, I just continue browsing the shelves. I'm looking through them, and then it jumps out at me again. One copy of the book at the top shelf, and then another copy of the book at the lower shelf. And I'm looking at it, and I'm like, well... Now I have to pick it out. So I take it out and I'm flipping through it. And then I see, oh my God, I can't believe I forgot about this. Like I remembered that it was about like a second or third generation Asian family in America. I don't think I even thought about it even of the differences between each one or just, it wasn't really a big part of the story even. So I just, you know, I forgot third generation, second generation people living their lives cool. So picked it up. Last time I saw this book was in my school library. And I'm 20 years old right now. Last time I read this book, Kira Kira by Cynthia Kadohata. Last time I read this was eight years ago, six years ago, something like that. So I pick it up, I take it home, I buy it. I pick it up, I buy it, I take it home. I reread it, and then by the end of it, I'm just crying. This story, <laughs> I forgot about how good it was. I didn't realize how much it did actually affect my personality. And I think I'm gonna be saying this about every book that I read, like, oh yeah, every book I reread at least, I'm gonna be like, oh yeah, this is what it's meant to me back in this time. And I don't know if I could recommend it because it says in the back that the recommendation is ages 10 to 14. I recommend it anyway, I highly recommend it. And I don't mind that I might not be the intended audience, but like just the entire experience of all of those things happening around the same time and I was just like Whoa, this is why I read books. This is why 
I love being part of the literary world because the literary world, even if it's not the most sophisticated book, even if they don't use big fancy words, it introduces you to another life that you wouldn't have been exposed to otherwise. And it introduces you to different people, different ways of thinking, different everything really. And I think that's why I like to travel. Like I like to experience new things and I like to experience new thoughts and new perspectives. And I think that is a good way to casually mention I'm back in Bahrain for now. Hello. Who even knows when I'm next gonna make a video? I'm just saying. Like, books are fun. And I'm just saying. <laughs> okay. Bye. And then, yes. This is actually pretty cool. We go into the void.